So I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, Sonia John Stetson, who is a postdoc at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. Um, he did his medical clinical rotation in Guadalajara, Mexico. He has over 30 publications in international journals such as tissue and lung transplantation and circ uh, circulation in Lancet. He's presently the co-medical director of IMI International in Mexico. His uh, particular interests include ovarian transplant and post uh, poor res responders of international um, patients that are visiting the clinic in Mexico from the U.S. and from all over the world. So, Sony, please go ahead. Uh, just real quick, I'll just uh, re-emphasize. Um, I'm here for Dr. Luis Rubicaba, which most of you probably know from Guadalajara, Mexico. He couldn't presently be here because of his father-in-law's death and his son had two surgeries done. So anyway, um, I'm, part, I'm an associate with Dr. Rubicaba in Emmy, Guadalajara, Mexico. This is where we're located at. Um, the bottom section of the building that you see is where our consultation and, and the background is our hospital. It's a new area of where we're at in Guadalajara. Let me start with the introduction here. This is a vitrification. It's being used with increasing frequency as an alternative method of crowd preservation in the, in the field of art, resulting in significantly higher successful rate of oocytes and embryos, and of course, excellent clinical outcomes. Among them, the formation of intracellular ice appears to be most damaging. The first strategy to prevent intracellular ice from forming was to adopt a lower concentration of crowd protectant and long, slow cooling stage. In our investigation and research that we're doing right now, we looked at um, the highly efficient and safe vitrification using hydroxypropyl cellulose as a macromolecule supplement from crowd preservation of oocytes and blastocytes. And of course, as, as everyone knows, Dr. Kuyama introduced all this in 1992 and, and onwards. And from this, he actually is the one that taught us um, the new technique using HPC in 2011. What you see here is um, we, you have a, for example, if you have a, a virus of a positive patient, what we do is we load the oocytes on the cryo top sheet. And once we dip the, the cryo top into the liquid nitrogen, of course the virus can't move in the liquid nitrogen, therefore the virus cannot come out from the vitrification. Then furthermore, the oocyte is covered with a plastic cover, so you, you put the cover on the, cr the crowd top and it twists and it prevents any virus from escaping or entering. So you have the crowd top storage, which is in the liquid nitrogen with other patients, but remember the virus can't come out, therefore the virus transmission between the patient is impossible to cross-contaminate. So once we thaw, the thawing process is in a petri dish. The, the virus is released, but in the patient's individual dishes, we never mix and there's no con cross-contamination. So the virus contamination to other patients is impossible. The whole purpose is, of this is to reduce the possible risk of viral contamination resulting from use of media containing biological macromolecules. Most government regulators in some countries have stipulated that non-serum substitutes must be used in human assisted reproduction technology, including crowd preservation. Let me tell you a little bit about um, hydroxypropyl cellulosis. HPC is a derivative of cellulose, mainly polysaccharide that constitutes the wood. Both water solubility and organic solubility it is used as a topical ophthalmic protectant and lubricant. That's how it was discovered. H HPC is neither of cellulose, in which some of the hydroxy groups in the repeating glucose units have been hydroxypropylated, forming OCH2, CH, OH, CH3 groups using propylene oxide, which most of you know is a propylene plastic. 
And this is just a little um, biochemical chemistry of it. You got the molecular weight of 30,000 to a million. It's high water solubility, like the yellow color. And it's widely used in foods, or medical and pharmaceutical products. The recommended usage for HPC is used for artificial tears. It is used to treat me medical conditions with insufficient tear productions, such as um, keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis seca, recurrent coronal erosions, decreased coronal sensitivity, exposure, and neuroparalytic keratitis. HPC is also used as a lubricant for artificial tears and in eyes. It's also used as a food additive. HPC is used as a thickener, a low-level binder, as an emulsion stabilizer. In pharmaceuticals, it is used as a dis disintegrant. HPC is used as a sieving matrix for DNA separation by capillarity and microchip electrophoresis, and that's one reason why we went with this technique. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the PGD chromosome techniques. Of course, analysis of embryos chromosomes before it is transferred back into the uterus. There's three main techniques. You have the FISH, the PCR, and the CGH. Of course, the FISH is for small chromosome regions. The PCR is used for chromosome regions and genes. And CGH is a complicated set of all 24 chromosomes. Currently, the biopsy techniques that we use is the polar body biopsy. It's a maternal marker only. It is day three biopsy, removing one or two cells, and the blastocyst biopsy. More labs are now implementing this procedure. Blastocyst biopsy. Why wait till blastocyst stage? Blast, uh, blastulation identified best for developing embryos. You have fewer embryos that needs to be analyzed and fewer resources needed. You have more cells can be taken, meaning more DNA for an analyze and with less error rate. And of course, you have reduced impact on the embryos. You have less stress on the embryos. Let me back up. Sorry about that. So just a little 10 second video of the biopsy of the blastocytes as you can see to your far right there. So it was just a little video that we had we demonstrated in, in our in our clinic there. In summary, the blastocyst biopsy, the outcomes are better than the cleavage stage biopsy, which improves embryo viability. The number of cycles achieving transfer is lower, but outcome per IVF cycle started is similar as the single embryo transfer, which is possible. And also, you have third, you have the reduced cost for PGD. The number of embryos analyzed is reduced. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the fish. The problem with the fish, you have accuracy and error rates. You have cell loss, signal overlapping or splitting, variable cell fixation, which is the residual cytoplasm, hybridization efficiency and times, which is multiple times, and you have cell overlap, which is a blastocyst biopsy, which you saw on the last slide. You can also have limits on fluorophores, amiable 5, up to 12 chromosomes with 3 hybridization. You have diploid, aneuploid mosaics, which is the blastocyst biopsy, and you have small portion of aberrant cells in samples. This is just a little um, from fertility and sterility, the group from Levins. Um, they showed they looked at 172 non-donors in cryopreserved embryo cycles. They looked at implantation, pregnancy, and live birth rates. You had the fresh, they, they used fresh and frozen cycle characteristics were similar between the groups. On day five of the fr um, frozen blastocytes embryo transfer, Statistically, they had significant high implantation rate, showing 32.2% versus the 19.2%.
In summary, they, they suggest that the embryo development rate may in part predict implantation and subsequent frozen blastocyte embryo transfer outcomes. Although embryos not achieving the blastocyst stage until day six still demonstrate acceptable outcomes. Blastocysts, an advanced understanding of the metabolic requirements and development needs of in vitro embryos has led to enhance, enhanced culture medium and incubation systems. Presently, more than 50% of all zygotes produce development to blastocytes. In 1998, Gardner's group showed that the development of sequential medium culture, which two mediums, G1 and G2, the basic com composition stimulate the tuberary and uterus fluid. Another group um, looked at the blastocyst stage here. They showed that many factors influence, influence the likelihood of blastocyst development and transfer. They looked at female patients' age and the number of oocytes retrieved. Up to two-thirds of the embryos are developed into blastocysts by day five in fresh cycle-assisted reproduction techniques. When examining the fresh assisted reproduction technique cycles with blastocysts, the remaining after transfer, those with spare blastocysts demonstrate significantly higher implantation rate, showing a 44.8 versus 26.7 p-value 0.24. And the pregnancy rate per transfer at 72.4% versus the 44.4, compared with those without blastocysts remaining. Cytogenic analysis blastocysts. Aneuploid is a principal genetic factor affecting reproductive success in humans, which we all know. A great number of morphologically normal embryos either do not implant or spontaneously abort early in pregnancy because their chromosome number deviates from the normal chromosome, the diploid 46. Numerous studies have examined the chromosomes of human gametes and pre-implantation embryos, demonstrating that aneuploid can arise during meiosis or after fertilization. Most meiotic errors derived from the oocytes. Investigations using a wide range of cytogenic techniques have confirmed the high prevalence of chromosomes, anomalies of maternal origin, and shown that an aneuploid increase in frequency with advancing female age. This is a blastocytes before and after vitrification. Of course, you see the grade A, B, and C before and after. And this was done in, in our Emmy clinic with the help of Dr. Kuyama and group. And here you see that the survival rate after cryotech vitrification from, is all 100%, showing from grade A to grade B to grade C, which is a very, very positive note on our part that we, we, we changed our technique using the SS to the HPC. And the pregnancy rates after cryoblastocysts with different grades of blastocytes, of course, showed you 100%, going back to grade A, grade B, and grade C again. So results from our clinic in Guadalajara, Mexico, and EMI, when comparing day five retrofied embryos to day six, there was no significant difference in clinical pregnancy. We had a 28 versus 24%. The type of device we used were the cryotype, the, crook, uh, the cryo hook, and with no difference seen with blastocytes were transferred to natural, natural cycles or the human, the human reproduction technique cycles. The survival rates were same for day five blastocytes as, as same to day six, showing 100%, 100% across the board. In conclusion, when using HPC since January 2011, to presently, we thawed over 82 blastocytes, showing a 100% survival rate. And of the 70 patients, some patients were PGD, but again, emphasizing day five and day six blastocyte is 100% across the board. So the surplus blastocytes in 58 patients of single embryo transplant and of 12 double embryo transplant, our clinic demonstrated of a 42% pregnancy rate which is not that high to most, most of the clinic, but being in Latin America, being in, in Mexico, that's a high successful rate from what we've shown from abroad and from other areas. So in conclusion, there's, 
there appears to be no significant difference in pregnancy outcomes following transfer of blastocyte vitrified either on day five or day six. Blastocysts that are considered of either excellent or fair quality on day five or day six have the same potential for implantation. CrowdTech vitrification works perfectly on day five and day six blastocyte showing 100%, which we have proven in our, in our clinic. Thank you very much.